in fight for you, right? Second one in a row. I mean, I guess what's the what's the feel like coming into a matchup like this? Uh, it doesn't get much better than this. Come on, man. This is everything I wanted. Uh, you know, the other one was a dream fight. This is the dream fight. This is the number one slot fight that I wanted. So uh, it's, it's right there. It's huge. Is there anything you took from that last experience? I mean, obviously, these are two different fighters, but just the experience of fighting somebody like that. Did you take anything from that last fight that you can use here? Um, I don't know. Like, it's just exciting. You know, for me, you know, it solidifies exactly what I believed it was going to be and what I wanted it to be. Um, and I think this fight's going to do the same. I mean, for us on paper, obviously, we look at it and we go like, this is going to be an absolute war, right? But can you let yourself go into a fight thinking like that? Or do you have to think like, no, I'm going to go in there and I'm not going to get hit. This is going to be clean. I'm, you know, I'm going to execute like that. Uh, yes and no. I mean, I'm going to get hit. He's going to hit me. And uh, it's probably going to be as hard as he can. That's awesome. I love it. And uh, he's probably going to try to take my head off. And I love that, too, because I'm going to try to take his, off, his head off and give it right back just as hard, if not harder. You know, uh, I look to go out there. I'm going to go out there and put on a performance. Um, you know, that's, that's my goal for this fight is to go out there and put on a performance, uh, put a real stamp on it, and uh, put a performance. If not, it's definitely going to be fight of the night. I mean, come on. It's crazy. You can count on my end. I'm going to come and bring it. And I'm pretty positive he's going to bring it. I was going to say, it looks like it should be fight night. But I will say, this card is absolutely stacked. I wonder if there's any part of you that, like, I mean, this is International Fight Week. It's amazing. But you thought, yeah, you know, if we were on a fight night where there's not much going on, a bunch of newcomers, maybe then we could guarantee ourselves 50 grand. Yeah, you know, I'm never going out there shooting like, you know, I'm, this is gonna, I'm getting fight of the night. You know, it's kinda, I'm guaranteeing that extra check. It is what it is. But, I mean, this fight card is stacked, like you said. But there's something about me and him that is a little different than these other fights. So I think you can expect, uh, you know, a crazy, violent, exciting fight. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I think we all are expecting that. Uh, the last thing, you, you went here, I guess, um, what's the move? I mean, is it to, to keep facing these kind of legend type fights or do you start looking at rankings and contenders? I mean, what's the move after this one? Uh, the move is to fight whoever comes next. You know, I, I'm not a guy to turn down fights or say no to people. So uh, whoever the UFC wants to send me, obviously, you know, I want to climb the ladder. There's people I would like to fight that excite me more for sure. Um, but you know what? It's don't rule out a run. Don't rule out a run. Brian, right? Uh, are your fingernails colored? Right there? Absolutely. Red, white, and blue. My daughter paints my fingernails every fight. She does like fireworks and uh, the red, four, white, and blue. Just Fourth of July themed. Yeah, Fourth of July themed. Brian, Brian, back here. Sorry. No. So I'm, I'm curious, you mentioned Robbie being that fight for you. It was, it was that one, the A1 for you. So when you actually saw the name, how did you react to that? Yeah, I was, I was kind of mind blown, super excited, you know, like couldn't believe it. Like I had asked for it after my last fight. Um, and I just, you know, wasn't sure. I kind of heard some rumors that he may have had a fight scheduled or anything, but so I was like, you know, I don't care. I'm going to put his name out there because I, I would love that fight. Um, and when it came through on an email and I saw it, I was in the car with my kids and my wife. And I was like, she was walking out of the store. And I rolled down the window. I was like, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. And she's like, what? I was like, I got Robbie Lawler. And she's like, no way. We freaked out. And then, and, uh, but we were super excited. I feel like the Matt Brown fight did a lot for you. It got you on a lot of people's radars. You got a new deal out of, out of everything. And now you get this Robbie Lawler fight. How much has things has life changed for you since the fight with Matt Brown? Has it changed a lot? Are you noticing sort of an uptick in your popularity and, and people being interested in you? Uh, you know, I don't really pay too much attention to that at all. Uh, you know, I'm on social media, but I'm not on it a lot. Uh, my focus after the fight is completely goes into my family and what we're doing on the outside. Uh, it's awesome to see people, you know, if people love to watch me fight, that's great because I'm going to come bring it every single time and you know put on a show for them while enjoying myself at the same time. Um, so hopefully people love to watch me fight. The new deal was awesome. You know I, I'm glad I got a new deal and to break it in with Robbie Lawler makes it that much sweeter. Um, so yeah, hopefully I continue. You know people continue to love to watch me fight because I'm going to come and put on a show for them. And lastly, you're obviously a, a fan of Robbie. You've watched all of his great wars over the years. And I, I spoke with him last week, and I asked him which fight stood out to him more, the fight with Rory McDonald or the fight with Carlos Condit, because they were seven months apart. So as a, as a guy from the outside looking in, as a fan who probably consumed both of those fights, which one stands out to you more? Is it the Rory fight or is it the Carlos Condit fight? To me, it's, it's the Rory fight. Like, that's the one that comes to mind every time. Um, 
but I hope to I hope to take that slot in in his mind. You know, I hope to when when we're done with this fight, I hope he thinks, you know, that was the toughest guy, that was the the big the wor the you know the best war I've ever had. You know, we went at it, gave it right back and forth, and uh, so I hope I take that number one slot. Brian, right in the center here. How's it going? Um, you, talk, you told me previously that you had actually met Robbie years ago at International Fight Week, interestingly enough. How much have you thought about that as Fight Week's getting closer to the actual fight? Uh, you know, it's, it's a meant to be moment, full circle. You know, uh, this, it's, it's crazy how it all lined up and, uh, you know, it's meant to be. You know, yeah, I met Robbie uh, at International Fight Week, uh, you know, a couple months before my very first amateur fight. and. Um, so when I met him, he asked if I fought, you know, it was me, my dad, and my wife, and, uh, he, you know, I was like, oh, I'm about to have my first fight, and stuff like that. Nice guy, I was a fan then, too, so uh, for us to get matched up is huge, because I've always been a fan of how he fights and everything, but also, like, the fact that it's on International Fight Week and everything is pretty crazy, and uh, just solidifies that it's like a full circle moment, meant to be. And you talked about the Rory fight. People look at that fight and say, Robbie, you know, hasn't been the same since that fight in terms of just how much damage he took in that. What's your assessment of his fights since then? Because I'm sure you've watched some tape ahead of this fight. Yeah, I mean, he's still very good, very dangerous, you know. Like I've, I've said in interviews and stuff that I don't feel like people are calling out Robbie, you know. He's a dangerous guy. He's still very, very, he's very, very skilled, and he's still very, very dangerous. Um, so what I take from it is just I need to put a whole lot of damage on him. And just last question, uh, have you seen any of your other former MMA lab teammates this week, Jared Cannonier, Sean O'Malley, have you seen them at all? And if so, what was that like to, you know, again, be a part of this card with them? I've seen uh, Sean, I've seen him a couple times, actually. It was cool to kind of reunite, see him. Um, I heard Jared and kind of glanced, saw him walk by, but uh, I saw Rob Emerson, he's also from the lab, he's here with Jared. So uh, it's really cool to see those guys and great to be on the card with them. Uh, bummed that Lauren Murphy's not on the card anymore, you know, she's a good friend of mine as well. Um, but it's great to have, you know, those guys here and, you know, they're like family as well. So it's a good, good opportunity, a good opportunity to get together. Thanks, Brian. Hey, Brian, back here. Way back here. Gotcha. There you go. Um, just one. Uh, I saw that you obviously have your pet pig, Macho Man. Do you have any other pets named after pro wrestlers? <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. He's the he's the only one after pro wrestlers. You know, we're we're looking at some other names too. Uh, but I I want we had another we have another boy pig. His name is Big Boss Hoss, and uh, we I was wanting to make name him like uh, Hulkamania or something like that. But you know, uh, my wife was like, oh no, you know, and but she fell in love with Macho Man when I came up when I threw that one out. So <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you.